Okay, this is the November 2021 Newton's Law question from the Physics Paper 1. It says to you, a 20 kilogram block is placed on a rough surface inclined at 30 degrees to the horizontal. A constant force F acting parallel to the surface is applied on the block so that the block moves up the incline at a constant velocity of 2 meters per second. Refer to the diagram below. It says a constant Kinetic frictional force of 18 newtons acts on the block. So this is kinetic frictional force of 18 newtons. And obviously that acts parallel to the slope and down the slope opposing the upward motion. Now it says you state Newton's first law in words. Newton's first law of motion, a body will remain in its state of rest or motion at a constant velocity unless a non-zero resultant or net force acts on it. So that's the easy part, two easy marks, now come four easy marks. It says draw a labeled free body diagram for the block, and if you have a look, there are four marks. So if we have four marks, then we know we should have four arrows. Remember, every arrow must be labeled. Let's draw the little blob, which is our free body. The first force that we can think of for any object that has mass is the weight of the object, which we can call the weight, or F little g, the force due to gravity. Then we have a surface. So you could very faintly draw a line in over here for the surface, and then come and parallel to the surface, we will have this force F up the slope. Make sure there's an arrow with a label and it's correctly positioned. At that 30 degree angle, if you've got your set square, you can draw it better. And then going down the slope, parallel to the slope, we have little fk, which is the force of kinetic friction. And the final force we are missing for the fourth mark is the normal force because we have a body on a surface. So we can either call this big N or f little n, the normal force. You remember you can change your labels. This can be w or um, this could be big N, it doesn't really matter either of them. Just make sure you have an arrow with an arrowhead coming out of a dot and an appropriate label. Now it says to you calculate the magnitude of force F. So usually when we do this, we know we're going to start with the formula F net equals MA. Whenever we have these diagrams, this formula is going to come in handy somewhere. So if we want to use this formula, the first thing we must think about is the acceleration. So this question says a constant velocity. So if we have a constant velocity, the acceleration is equal to zero. So on this side of the equation, we're going to, we can substitute in the mass 20, but we are going to be multiplying by zero. So either way, this could turn out to be zero. So that side of the equation is easy. For the other side of the equation, we need to do a bit of thinking. What have I forgotten to do? I gaily wrote my equation. I have forgotten to, these are vectors, state my positive vector direction. So before I started, I should have said up the slope is positive or negative. I'm going to choose up the slope is positive because that is the direction of the force that's pulling it up. So the direction of force F, this way it's going up the slope at 2 meters per second. So that's going to be my positive direction. Up the slope is positive. So anything going up the slope is positive. Any force going down the slope is negative. So you can only add vectors in a straight line. So at this point we have F up the slope, so it's positive. And we're going to add the force of kinetic friction, but I've put this too close here. We're going to add the force of kinetic friction, but it's down the slope, so we must subtract it. It is a negative force, because remember to find the net force we add, but it's a vector, so it gets the sign from its direction. And now we have one more force parallel to the slope. It's not on the diagram. Remember, when you draw one of these diagrams, you can only use the forces or the components. I'm going to draw in the components with another color. Here is the force due to the weight perpendicular to the slope, Fg perpendicular, and here is the force due to the weight 
parallel to the slope, Fg parallel. So what we have here is Fg parallel. We are going to add Fg parallel, but you can see the weight is acting down the slope. So we will actually be subtracting it. So we will end up with the force that is um, pulling it up the slope, less the force of kinetic friction, less the weight Fg parallel, and that is going to equal zero. So we are looking for F. We don't know F, but we do know in the question, it says we've got this force of 18 newtons, so we're going to subtract 18, and then we're going to subtract the parallel components of the weight. We know that the weight is equal to the mass times the gravitational acceleration, so if we want Fg parallel, it's going to be the mass, which is 20, the gravitational acceleration, which is 9.8, and then we are going to multiply this by the sine of the angle, which is sine 30, and this is going to equal zero. So if you put this all in your calculator and you do some maths, you get F subtract 18 subtract 98 equals zero. So the force is going to be equal to 116 newtons. Now go back to the question. Remember, forces are vectors. They have a magnitude and direction. This one just says calculate the magnitude. If we had to put the direction, we would be saying that this was up the slope, but it just asked for the magnitude, so we can just leave it as a number. Now it says to you, force F is removed when the block reaches point X. Here is point X over here. Okay. The block continues to move up the slope and comes to rest momentarily at point Y. Obviously, the block's got some momentum, and it keeps moving with its momentum. It says, assume that the kinetic frictional force acting on the block remains at 18 newtons as it moves from point X to point Y. Write down the net force acting on the block as it moves from X to Y. Now, anytime it says, write down the net force, okay? The words write down tell you that you don't need to do a calculation. So you have to think about what's going on here, okay? It's going to be an easy answer that you don't have to calculate. And it's very tempting to write zero. But that's not true because if you have a look at this diagram, if we remove this force F, okay, it says to you force F is removed. If we remove this force F, what forces are we left with on the block here? We still have the normal, we still have the weight, and we still have the force of kinetic friction. So what are we left working on here? The force of kinetic friction and the weight, which from the previous question we worked out to be 116 newtons. Because remember this was in equilibrium, so there was 116 newtons going up the slope, and 116 newtons going down the slope to keep the block at a constant velocity. So the answer here is 116 newtons, okay? And we have to have a direction on this because it says what is the force? Force is a vector. Where is this force acting? Is 116 newtons acting down the slope? So basically, you've just got to look at your force diagram, and remember the net force is the sum of all the other forces, and if we added up all of those forces, we would only be, the only thing making it slow down and eventually stop are these two forces down the slope, the kinetic friction and the component of the weight. But remember when it says write down the answer, something you've already calculated, or zero, or something really, really easy. Now it says to you, 2.5, calculate the distance between points X and Y. So now this is a bit unusual, but not unheard of. If we're going to calculate the distance, we know we call the distance delta X in um, physical science. And we know things about the block. We know that its initial velocity was 2 meters per second up the slope. Velocity is a vector. Okay, and then it says to you in the question, the block continues to move up the slope and comes to rest. So we know that we're going to have a final velocity of zero. So this is very nice. We can have a look here. 
had our equations of motion, because this is motion in a straight line, so we're allowed to use the equations of motion instead of energy considerations. And we have a delta x, a vi, and a vf. And we have this handy formula. If you look at all of your equations of motion, you have this handy formula that says vf squared equals vi squared plus 2a delta x. So this is very nice because it's everything we we have except for our friend A, the acceleration. So we would have to calculate the acceleration. And this part of the question is telling you how we can calculate it because it says write down the net force. So F net equals MA, and we know that that net force that's slowing down the block as it's moving over this area here, the force that's slowing down the block adds up to 160 newtons. We know the mass of the block, okay? The mass of the block is 20, and so we can find the acceleration. But remember, force is a vector. So what are we missing here? We need to put signs on this. If we say up the slope is positive, if we keep the sign convention from the beginning, which direction is this 160 newtons? It is down the slope. So this must be negative. The mass is a scalar. It doesn't have a sign. And if we do some calculator work here, we will end up with an acceleration of negative 5.8 meters per second per second. So once we've found this acceleration, we can go back to this Vf squared equals Vi squared plus 2a delta x. My final velocity was 0. 0 squared is 0. My initial velocity was 2, which we can square. And remember, the sign convention is working for our velocity as well. Okay, We said up the slope is positive, so this Vi was up the slope. In the beginning, the block was moving up the slope, and then it slowed down, so that's positive. Plus 2, the acceleration is down the slope, so this is negative. Is it 5.8? Yes, 5.8. And then multiplied by delta x. And so if we put this into our calculator, we will end up with a delta x of, what do we end up with? We end up with 11,6 delta x minus... 11,6 delta x, no, it's positive, equals 2 squared is 4, which gives us a delta x round to two decimal places as per the instructions of 0,34 meters. And that is how you calculate the delta x. Remember, things that are a vector have both magnitude and direction, and you must always include it in your calculations.